you and I used to talk about, and you still spend a lot of time working on curing horrific viruses that affect uh, people that we don't think about and countries that we don't care about, unfortunately. But there are obviously other viruses out there that, that don't get as much talk. And I know you're talking a lot about the next pandemic. So do you want to do you want to take a little moment to scare us? Well, remember COVID-19, which is also known as SARS-2. Um, there was a SARS-1, right, in 2003 that came out of southern China and uh, sh shut down Toronto, Canada for a while until the Rolling Stones finally came and did a concert. That's what brought back Toronto after oh, really? SARS-1. What's that? I didn't know that. Yeah, that's a great story. Um, and then... And then, and then you had Mayer's Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome in, 20, in 2012. So COVID's the third major coronavirus epidemic slash pandemic. So the, the, and that's why when people talk about, you know, the lab leak and the phony baloney COVID origins, I say, look, I mean, this is our third one. It's, you know, you, you can't keep saying everyone's a lab leak or, or manufactured. So guess what? We're going to have a fourth one. And, and you might say, when? Well, I don't know. It's so far it, We've, this, we've had three in this 21st century, so on average every seven years. So I have to believe that, you know, five, six, seven years from now, we're going to have a fourth major COVID, COVID 27 or 28. or And the reason is because, you know, studies from the EcoHealth Alliance and elsewhere show we have bats all over the face of East Asia that are carrying coronaviruses. So they're probably jumping. To humans all the time and it just every now and then one of them catches fire and so i'm concerned about that i think that that's a high probability event i'm still worried about new flu strains avian flu we have something called nipah virus um and then that and that's on a background of all that malaria and tuberculosis and hiv aids and our neglected tropical diseases so and, and the reason I think a lot of this is happening, I wrote about in my last book um, called Preventing the Next Pandemic. I think, you know, if we started to see an increased frequency of these new emerging infections, as they say, in this 21st century, especially over the last few years, and now we've, of course, we've had monkeypox um, as well, and, and now the return of polio, it's this confluence, I think, of political instability, especially in war-torn areas like in the Middle East or political instability in places like Venezuela, elsewhere in Central Latin America. I think it's a very aggressive urbanization. You know, as the world changes, it's we're, we're coalescing into these big urban um, areas. Um, and 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 I saw for the first time now more of the world is urbanized than it is living in rural populations. So that's manifesting as this these huge mega cities. Right. So in 50 years, the whole world is going to be just a I mean Karachi and and Kinshasa and Sao Paulo and Houston, Texas are going to be these massive mega cities of tens of millions of people. And by the way, it's going to be hot as hell because of of, of global warming. So so the world is coalescing into these big sweltering mega cities of people on top of each other. So that means mosquito-borne viruses like dengue and Zika, they're going to become more frequent. It's going to outstrip uh, urban infrastructures for clean water. So we should be looking at more diarrheal pathogens. And then, of course, um, unless we do something to curb uh, pollution, more respiratory infections. So. So the future is not looking so good from a from a disease perspective, and I argue it's already starting now.